days of hands. How many of us think it's eight three percent? Any guesses? Three percent. Okay. How many think B four and a half? Okay. How many think C six percent? Okay. The answer is three point one nine percent. Harvard College broke its own record this year at three point one nine percent acceptance. Kudos to all those who got in right. A lot of those students, like many of you sitting here, probably aced every exam. They were on the national debate team. They won these Olympiads. They were leaders, head boys, head girls, all of it. All the right, right check marks to reach Harvard. All amazing accomplishments. Definitely a reason to celebrate, right? But like in every good party, there comes along a party pooper. In this case, it's Frank Bruni, who's a New York Times columnist. Frank says, "Where you go is not who you'll be." Let's read that again. Where you go is not who you'll be. Is Frank Bruni wrong? These kids just got into Harvard, Frank. Surely they know exactly what they want out to get out of life. But let's take a pause. How many of us really think about who we are, what we want to get out of life, and why we want to go to these colleges? Are we just so caught up into getting into elite institutions that we lose sight of the bigger picture? Have we made college into a final destination and not just a milestone? I know I had. August 2010 was the lowest point of my life. Interestingly, I had just graduated from Harvard, but I had no money in my bank account. All my savings had gone into paying my tuition. I had no direction. I was completely lost. I had no idea what I wanted to do. How could this be happening? I had done everything right. I had just graduated from Harvard. Then why was I miserable? Everything I had done up to that point in my life was focused on getting into Harvard. I had always graduated in the top five percent of my class. I had studied at Carnegie Mellon, London School of Economics, UC Berkeley. Check, check, check. I had worked at a top-tier firm in finance. I had written for the Indian Express. I even got certified as a yoga teacher. Check, check, check. I had checked off all the boxes. I had done everything right. I had just graduated from Harvard, and I was miserable. I realized that I had built up Harvard to be the answer to all my problems, the ultimate temple of wisdom and wealth. I had simply put all the onus of my life on one institution. What I had failed to realize was that Harvard was simply an enabler, a catalyst, a platform. Sure, I could have landed a six-figure salary with that Harvard resume, right? The Harvard resume is very powerful. You can get a job, but I didn't know what I wanted. No job felt right. Who was I? Who did I want to become? I had to find out. So I tapped into the extensive Harvard network and started talking to people. I spoke to CEOs, founders of NGOs, dancers, musicians, architects. I spoke to a whole spectrum of people. And interestingly, I heard four common answers, which I'm going to share with you. So a lot of people said when I asked them why did you pick this career, they said, "Hey." It's because I'm really good at doing this. This is why I'm doing this career. Some said this is because I'm really passionate about this career. Some said this career allows me to channelize my strengths into helping somebody else. And some were like, "Hey, this pays the bills. Simple enough." But this gave me a really powerful framework to work with. Then began a series of soul searching, lots of iterations, even a conversation with monks in Ladakh, and finally. I struck upon education and career counseling as my field. Why? Because it checked off all the four boxes for me. I was very good at connecting with people. Check. I loved channelizing my strengths to help somebody else. I was definitely found a career that people were willing to pay for, and I loved what I was doing. This was my aha moment. Everything suddenly, finally made sense. More than a year after I graduated, I finally found myself. Obviously, to succeed, I leaned in tremendously on all the skills I had learned at college. College will give you hard skills: finance, operations, strategy, marketing; soft skills: networking, communication. I most definitely used all those years of accelerated classroom learning to get where I am today. College gave me many, many skills, but what to do with those skills, I figured out only much later. In my head, Harvard had always been the finishing line. What it turned out to be was a crucial turning point. Let's fast forward to today. 
I've now counseled thousands of students, published a book, have some money in the bank, but most importantly, I found my purpose. I found myself. My story is now a decade old, but even today when I ask my students at Reach IV, why do you want to go to college? Some are unsure, some say because they want to become successful and wealthy. Some think of it as a status symbol, but very, very few have thought of the big picture. People keep a myopic view, assuming that once I get into an Ivy League college, I'll have all my answers. Many parents also endorse this perspective. They'll do their best to get their kids into the right play schools, kindergarten, middle school, junior school, high school, all with their eyes set on that goal of getting their child into the right college, doing whatever they can to do so. Many high schools will also purport this vision, right? Many high schools are established as feeder high schools. Feeder schools are basically really premium high schools that say that if you come to my high school, you will most definitely get an admission into an Ivy League college. Everyone is focused on how to get in. How many are thinking of why to get in? Has college become a finite goal and not a beacon of infinite learning and exploration? Today, more millennials have college degrees than any other generation in our history. Yet, they struggle after college. According to Gallup, 87% of employees worldwide are not engaged in their work. Think about this, right? College is only three to four years of your life. What lies ahead of you is the next 30 to 40 years. Do you have a framework or have you thought about how you want to use your years at college to make the most of those next 40 to 50 years? Well, I'm going to share with you some of my tips and then please share your tips with me after the break. So tip number one, study subjects that you hadn't thought of, you st of studying before. For example, if you went into college thinking you want to be a computer science graduate, take a class in history, psychology, theater, drama, explore something different. What, what doing this will give you is a sense of lateral thinking and build a lateral skill set. And who knows, you might hit upon a subject that you hadn't even considered before. Make friends from diverse countries. I know, of course, India is very diverse, but when you go into an international environment, diversity takes a whole other meaning. Diversity enables you to think differently, think after the box, and sometimes question your own thinking that we've been brought up with. Figure out what you excel at, right? Like the framework I provided earlier, figure out what you're really good at. Now, being good at something doesn't necessarily only mean that you get an A plus in an exam, right? Some of us here have already mastered how to just cram for an exam, we get the A plus. To me, excellence is that moment when you're really in the moment and everything feels effortless around you. That's when you know you really excel at something. Work in teams. We all did this during the pandemic. The school was shut, but seamlessly we worked remotely from home, administrators, principals, and the students. Working in teams to me really brings two strengths. One, I figured out my own strengths when I'm in a team, knowing what I can bring to the table, how can I contribute. I also realize when I'm in teams, what I don't know how to do, when do I lean in on somebody else? So working in teams gives me a good strength of both my strengths and my weaknesses. Explore different cultures. Cultural exploration is really big for me. When uh, I started exploring new cultures, it taught me two things. One, obviously an appreciation of new cultures. Even more importantly, it allowed me to appreciate my own culture even more when I started explaining to other people about the rich Indian heritage that I was endowed with. So definitely explore new cultures. Internships. I can't stress the importance of interning more. What we study in a classroom is more of a theoretical concept, a notion of a subject. So a lot of times I get a student who will say, hey, I really want to study law. And I say, why? He says, oh, I'm acing my classes in English. And I'm always munning and I'm on the debate team, which is fantastic. But when you go into a law firm and you understand what a law firm takes, the kind of hours, the kind of work pressure, you'll get a different perspective. So interning will take your in-classroom in theoretical learning and give you a practical side of it. Use college to build skill set, right? Your, those three to four years, you really want to build a tool set of hard skills and soft skills and pocket those skills so that over those next 30 to 40 years, you're able to access that toolkit at your beck and call. Travel the world. I can't stress more on traveling. Traveling obviously exposes you to cultures and new experiences. What it also does, it makes you a quick thinker. You might end up in a situation where you lose your passport, you might miss a train, you might be stranded on the platform and have to figure out on the go your next move. Traveling will make you adept at 
uh, figuring out how to deal with unforeseen circumstances, and of course, having a great time at the same time. Be a leader. Now, leadership for me means two main things, right? When I have to lead a team or lead a, a group of people, I have to figure out a goal, a common vision to work with, and figure out how to motivate them. But before you motivate others, first you've got to look inwards. First I have to motivate myself, I have to set a common goal for myself, and then I take it outside. So first it requires internal alignment, and then I can take this internal alignment externally. My last tip is failure. Try to fail at something, right? A lot of us in the room haven't really failed as much as we should. I, feel, I wish I had almost failed a lot more when I was growing up. Failure builds resilience. Failure builds character. Failure allows you to build up from the rock bottom. And when you fail and you build up, that feeling you get of achievement is, is really something else and something spectacular. Essentially, what I'm trying to talk about is, in, in summary, what you should use college to do is find what Jim Collins, who's the author of From Good to Great, some of you might have read the book, calls finding your personal hedgehog. Your personal hedgehog lies at the intersection of what you're passionate about, what you're good at doing, and what is something that people will be willing to pay for. If you find the intersection of the three, you found your sweet spot. Now, is your personal hedgehog going to be static Obviously not. The world around us is changing. We are evolving every day as human beings. Your personal hedgehog will also keep moving along. But as long as you come into college with a growth mindset, you will embrace your surroundings to do whatever it is required at that point of time. For example, NFTs, blockchain, social media, digital marketing, these concepts didn't even exist when we were in college. Can anyone here predict with certainty what the careers of 2050 will look like? Probably not, right? So as long as you have a learning mindset and you're focused on continuous learning, you should be fine. Just remember that learning doesn't end at college. It's continuous, it's perpetual, and it's infinite. College is just a stepping stone. It's an important milestone, not the end goal. College is just the start of the rest of your life. Thank you.